feel like if we just started emulating what our grandparents did, we'd all right? be and, a lot you know, better off. I mean, healthier. Jen and I talk about it a lot, but we, we talk about, um, you know, that generation. So uh, Janet's dad was probably a generation older than my grandparents. So, so, um, and some of the things the that, cows. Yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's awesome. Nature therapy. Yeah. Um, and Jen will tell some of the stories that um, some of the things that he would say. And I mean, back then we thought he was crazy, but uh, you look back and Janet tells a story of one time, you know, in the eighties when there was an anti-fat, anti-dairy craze, mm-hmm. whatever, mostly anti-fat, they were making margarine and selling yeah. margarine, how healthy it was. So, Janice's mom brought home margarine, <laughs> and, right? And you know they grew up on a dairy farm, yeah. right? And so Janice's dad ate it, or maybe no. did he? No, he no. didn't. <laughs> and he just told her, he goes, "You don't have to buy that ever again." Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, he, and we think back, and you know, of course, I drank the Kool Aid in the eight seventies mm-hmm. and eighties. I was told how bad fat was, right? And so even Janet, I was a dietitian, I, I was telling people, yeah, to right. Eat and even Janet yeah. and I. You know, when we first got out of college, we were using, you know, low fat stuff and no butter. And of course, Janet loved butter growing up on the on a on a dairy farm. And now we realize, you know, Janet's dad was right. It's like yeah. the, the butter is good for us. We and, were all carb loading all the time. Yeah, yeah, right. Just just pure carbs. And we were talking about, you know, I mean, you just look at the food pyramid and what's on the top of the food pyramid, you know, grains. I mean, seriously. I mean, yeah. that's not that's no, not, that was on the bottom. Remember, I, the, the foundation oh, I, yeah. was all the flour and grains yeah, yeah. And, and all the starchy stuff. Right, right, right. And I mean, now we realize those, you know, Janice's dad's generation, which is my grandparents' generation, they ate bacon and eggs, and yeah. and they lived a very healthy life. Yes, my grandparents did too. I mean, into the, well into their nineties. Yeah, right? well, right. well into their nineties. Yeah, and they were. I remember being chased by my great grandmother, who was eighty at the time, in the yard. She was eighty <laughs> know, right? and running me down. Yeah. I tell a story about my grandpa when we were teenagers. Um, the grandkids, um, my they, my grandparents are from. Missouri and they started a family young. So my grandma oh, yeah. had my mom when she was 16. Mm-hmm. And so my grandma was a grandma when she was 36. Yep. So my grandpa was in his mid fifties, which at the time I thought was old, you know, when I was like 16, 15 <laughs> yeah. or 16 we're and, and us and the cousins are, are we're racing. It were, it's like some kind of holiday and we're racing outside. And so my, like, here's my um, grandpa comes out and we were talking to eat bacon and eggs every breakfast every yeah. breakfast and um he comes out and he starts running with us we're like oh yeah we're gonna we do this kid <laughs> we're gonna smoke this old man and, and he beat us all oh, i mean God. it was incredible of course we're talking about a guy that did hard manual yes. labor right. most of his life right. and um spent up and spent their time outside yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Gardening yeah. or yeah. what have you, they were outside because there were no TVs and cell phones and computers and other distractions to bring them inside. Right. Yeah, and it wasn't honestly his health didn't go downhill <laughs> until he started um, going to the doctor. Going to the doctor. <laughs> You said well, it. Retired. I mean, it's true. I mean, that's, and not working. Well, yeah, that's one thing. And and he said he said something to me that hit my brother and I. I have a twin brother. And it hit us very hard. And when my grand, my grandpa's health, his mind, first of all, went started going downhill. And once he started accessing the healthcare system, they just they 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 oh, no. it just it's a it, nose dog. it is it is. Yeah. And he, you know, he, financially, they could have retired when he was in his early fifties. And my grandpa, my grandma was always bugging him to retire. Well, so finally he retires into his sixties or something. He's mid sixties, and he was, you know, we're talking about a guy that. He owned his own um, construction company, um, built you know built many roads all over the nation, and um, we're talking about by the time he was in that age, I mean he'd show up at the job site at ten o'clock, say hi to people, take them to lunch, right. and then, you know I mean so you know more relaxed, yeah I mean you know and then he'd pick up a shovel and once in a while and scoop some gravel. Yeah. I mean I remember watching that; it was just the coolest thing, <laughs> and um, or he'd get in a loader and he start do, you know driving a loader or whatever. And um, I thought, what? Well, so he came in one day to the pharmacy and he said, the worst decision I ever made was to retire. Mm. 
And my grandma got upset with him. She looked at him, kind of snarled at him. And I took that to heart. And his health went downhill after that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I, I say often that I'm never going to retire. As long as I can physically work, yeah. I'm never going to retire. And I don't think retire. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Our brain needs exercise just like yeah. our body does. And we not physically we're not designed to retire. If retirement is sitting around watching TV, that is not what we're designed to do. Well, I'll tell you one thing. My dad did shift work for 35 years yeah. and we are glad he retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he is too, but he did not, he's still just as active and just involved in everything as he, I mean, now he has better sleep schedules, right? But he's outside every day working in the yard. He's mowing the church lawn. Exactly. He's going he's to the staying gym. Active. Exactly. He's staying active. Yeah. Uh, too much YouTube, in my opinion, because <laughs> uh, I get the videos texted to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm like, Dad, uh, out. <laughs> get outside, please. Uh, yeah. Well, we touched on diet and, and exercise Um outside. And I feel like the generation we were just talking about, you know, my dad used to, I mean, he had a, a metabolism, I thought that was, that was big. But if I think about it, it probably scaled around his work schedule too, of farming and ranching and things like that. But they were eating natural food, of course, but I'm sure their appetites were different. Yes. And part of that was probably stimulated by all the things that they were doing. But if our gut health isn't good, our overall health isn't good either. So there has to be something said about the fact that, you know, you're outside, you're doing things, you're doing active things, your appetite increases, but you're probably making better choices too. Well, they didn't have all the sugar. That we have sure. access to all the time now. And they were eating, like you said, bacon and eggs and butter, fat. Right. Fat and protein mm -hmm. are very satiating. And, and and that's why I tend to eat that way because it I don't get hungry when I, when I do eat that way. I had bacon this morning. I, it's one of my favorites. Well, right. you know? I, I, I really, I honestly, I, I challenge people all the time. Um, I dare you to eat too much beef. I mean, seriously, had a, had eat a, too much steak. I, I dare you. Like. Yeah. Or I dare you to eat too much eggs. I, I know Janet and I, we eat bacon and eggs often on the weekends. We don't eat breakfast a lot during the week. And, uh, you know, routinely I'll say, well, she's like, how many eggs do you want? Um, you know, and I've already, we've already got some bacon and I'm saying, oh, three eggs. And next thing I know, I can only eat two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and an egg is only. Um, 70 calories. Yeah. I don't even pay attention to calories. I can't no, tell well, if you eat real, calorie. Right. If you yeah. eat real food, you don't really need right. to. I right. do track my calories just because it keeps me accountable. Right. And when you eat something stupid, you put it in there and it's like, oh my gosh, I should have done that. Yeah. Because you know? here's the thing, because your body is not a bomb calorimeter, right? So yeah. a, a, a Coke may have, you know, Coke and an avocado basically have the same amount of calories, but one is going to behave very differently. <laughs> well, than the uh, other. right. And I, that's a great example. So, you know, an apple has 100 calories, a, a, a bigger okay. apple, mm -hmm. and a Coke has 150 calories. Mm -hmm. I, I, I dare you to eat too many apples. Yeah. I could drink three Cokes right away. Oh, my goodness. And not even stop. You know, but but an apple, I mean, honestly, a big apple is all I can eat. If you eat real food, you just, it's, it's hard to overeat. Um, I know. We recently just got rid of, like, all snack foods. And we did this when we were out in Colorado. We just didn't have a whole lot of snack foods. Um, and I, we both dropped like five to seven pounds just by getting rid of a little, you know, the chips and stuff that sneak in, even though they're made with avocado oil yeah, yeah, or whatever. Right, you know, right. It's, I, it's, you, try to, right. you try to pick the healthiest junk food. Um, but we just, I'm like, this is just, it's not good for us. I can, I don't feel as well when I eat it. And so we cleaned it up and boom, weight just kind of fell off. Yeah, it's, it's the inflammation, even though it's, right. you know, the better quality oils, um, it's still junk food and it's still not nutrient, you know, well, nutrient dense and what your gut health needs. Right. It's, um, you know, a good tip is if it doesn't rot, don't eat it. True. You know, th think about the avocado. The avocado is going to rot and those chips are not going to rot. So they're still junk food. If it, I, I always, I often challenge people, if, if you want to eat chips Here's, here's how you can, you won't eat too many chips. Make homemade potato chips. Mm -hmm. I dare you to eat too many. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah. <laughs> There's so much work. You're like, one chip and enjoy it. Yeah. And there's so much work. That's the whole point is that if we don't prepare our food, it's really easy to overeat it. So if it's in a box, you can just keep eating it, keep eating it's it. It's just everywhere. Yeah. You're inundated with all the commercials for junk food. If you're, in a, if you're in an office, there's always somebody bringing in junk. There's just junk, 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 and eat a, a, a mouthful here, a mouthful yeah. there. And it really adds up. Um, and so, yeah, like, you know, our grandparents, they did, everything was from scratch. Yeah. They and even made it, they spent all day preparing it. They didn't have yeah. time to do anything right. else. You know? And even with the, uh, I think the preparing the food is an important part. Even with the, the keto craze, you know, um, bread just gets hammered yeah, on yeah. and bread is so bad. Bread is so bad. I, I, I'm a big believer. Janet is really a big believer in moderation, but when you look at like Janet's, um, parents and their generation they they baked bread but it Sourdough. was ho- and it was homemade it was fermented and, more than likely. <laughs> i mean it was from scratch homemade mm-hmm. and gmo it was just totally different and i mean they, and they you know i mean could you overeat bread oh yeah. <laughs> butter yeah. and bread <laughs> out of your fresh out of the oven yeah <laughs> i yeah. mean you know my mom would She had one day that she baked bread and, you know, but at the same time, I think about, you know, we didn't, we did not sit in our house. We, you know, our our parents kicked us out the door. We couldn't be in the house. We didn't have that much room, but, you know, you were constantly outside and, and yes, so. You know, it would be grab and run. (laughs) Well, and and going. She bring it outside to you. You stay on the porch and ate. And yeah. Then, yeah. And that's a good point. Here, here's one of the problems is that going back to nature therapy, uh, my brother and I have talked about this before. It's like when we used to go out and we'd ride our bikes all over the neighborhood or we'd go and play baseball outside or whatever we would do outside um, in the neighborhood, we wouldn't have access to a refrigerator and a pantry. No. So you would you would actually Marcos, go you know, right yeah. that that's all you yeah. know and sometimes drink out of the ditch right I <laughs> no mean, we, not for <laughs> <laughs> no you can't do that in the delta no. yeah our water ran a lot faster so <laughs> yeah ours was dirty with uh, who knows uh, all kinds of ag chemicals in it yeah um, so uh, we, we, when you're outside like that you don't have access to you know food and that's one of the problems when. When people are inside watching TV, playing video games, whatever they're doing all day instead of that activity, one of the problems is is most of us in America have basically an unlimited food source in our house. Mm-hmm. It's darn near unlimited, and, and that's part of the problem. Convenience. The f- Absolutely. We have lives of convenience. And, you know, the, the thing about the kids, is which is most concerning, I uh, read an article, and this was a U.K. study, but kids were spending less time outside than um, prisoners. Yeah. You know, prisoners are allotted a certain amount of time right. to spend outside. The kids were getting less than two hours a day outside. So kids. So what happens to their uh, brain and their development? Because, you know, one of the things that you just touched on is um, what is it doing to them? Well, how about their imaginations? Right. I mean, when you're outside. Play. Creativity. Right. Exactly. When you're outside, you have this space in your head where you are filling it. Not a video game, not a show, not, you know, all that electronics, not your phone. It, you know, I mean, if you think of how many hours kids spent outside daydreaming, imagination, I mean, the creativity part to me is is quite frightening if you think about it. Right. And what happens as they are developing? I mean, I'm not a specialist in this, but it, it's very interesting to me, the differences. Well, and, and you also learn a lot about physics <laughs> when you're playing like we did, we were you know, jumping ditches with bikes, you know, <laughs> jumping out of trees, falling out of trees, which I did, broke some bones. Um, but, you know, we were always using up our dad's old building supplies, building tree houses and, and just getting into all kinds of trouble. Um, but we were, lar- we were learning a lot about, we were interacting with the environment and learning a lot so stuff we probably don't even realize we were learning at the time um and kids are missing out on that completely what is it doing to their brain right well that could be why we have so much anxiety too Mm -hmm. and some depression and things i mean i know this past couple years has brought that on but you know one of the things that you know we had two boys raising them and and you know activity outdoor activity oh wow keeps them out of trouble, right? Because they're tired. Yeah. Right? I mean, but it also gives them a limit too of, 
of safe too, you know, like you learn your limits right. in a safe way. Um, you know, you learn maybe that's not the best way to do this next time. I'm going to do something different because you don't want to get hurt. I mean, just those boundaries and limits just physically, but you're doing it in a, in an environment that is really, I mean, I'm not say, saying that they couldn't physically harm themselves in a, a, in a way, but you want to be careful with that. But, but emotionally and mentally they're learning, they're learning boundaries and they're learning things in ways that we don't really know or can't really calculate um, that's good for them, especially for teenagers, because, you know, they're taking risks in an environment that's better for them. I had read some articles recently too. Um, well, I'll say recently, a while back about this place where they allowed kids just to be kids and they were way up in the trees but, and, and nobody got hurt. Right. Now, and, and I wonder, are we being too protective with our children and not letting them be outside and exploring nature? Because they're always worried something might happen. Yes, something may happen, but typically it's not going to be horrible. There's going to be scratches and boo-boos, maybe the occasional broken bone. Um, but but, but a, having them avoid these interactions, I think, is much more harmful in the long run. Well, like Jenna says, <clears throat> with looking at trying to find limits, um, I think especially for for boys, um, you know, you got to know. Well, wait a minute. Um, I guess that didn't work. I couldn't jump that canal, so <laughs> I ended up coming up it short. Was a higher ramp, <laughs> right? <laughs> so either design, either design something different, or you know, do practice again. more. Or don't do it I again, do that. right? But you got to find your limit, and and I think that's what sets them up for life in general. Mm -hmm. And it's not just limited physical activity, but mental activity right. too. It's like, what can you accomplish? You know, 